Miss Lydia is not here, but she will be online with us. Yes, <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great conference and thank you so much for inviting me to talk about Wikidata. I hope you already had a great time with uh, Asaf and uh, lunch. Um, I want to talk to you a bit about 10 years of Wikidata and especially Wikidata for the Wikimedia projects. For those who don't know me, I'm Lydia. I do the product management for Wikidata at Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, oh. yes. So uh, next week, Wikidata is turning 10 years old. So that is one decade of Wikidata, which is uh, quite mind-blowing for me. But it also means that we've had um, been work we've been working on giving more people more access to more knowledge with Wikidata for 10 years now. And um, that is a really cool thing I'm very proud of. And I hope there are many more to come. But let's uh, look at where Wikidata is today. Wikidata today is a project that's at the center of the Wikimedia projects and of the Wikibase ecosystem. Um, it has a really lovely community of about 12,000 active editors and many, many more people who do really cool stuff around it. Here on this uh, picture, you can see some of them. The last time we met in person at Wikidatacon in Berlin in 2019. And I'm very much looking forward to another, hopefully in person one next year. Wikidata is also uh, by now the most edited Wikimedia project. There's a lot of activity happening on Wikidata every single day. And we have a very large um, corpus of data. And I need to update my slides because it's not nearly 100 million items anymore. We've actually crossed the uh, 100 million items just the other day. Um, so this is 100 million different things in the world that we're describing, from cities to people to taxons to all kinds of other concepts that um, you could, for example, write about in, in a Wikipedia article. And about these, we are making about 1.4 billion statements. That is a ton of data, as you can imagine. Uh, that needs a lot of uh, taking care of, maintaining, and improving, and updating every day. Next to that, we also have um, something we call lexemes. Um, of those, we have about 700,000, but I'm not going to spoil much of that for you because uh, there will be a talk, I believe, tomorrow, um, where you get an introduction to that part of Wikidata. And Wikidata is not just... Um, very important inside Wikimedia, but it's also very central to everyday technology you use. Uh, this could, for example, be a digital assistant on your phone if you ask it a, a factual question, um, then the answer to that might come from Wikidata and many other places um, on the internet and in other technology that you use. So now I talk a lot about data, but what kind of data does Wikidata actually have? Um, and Wikidata has um, labels, descriptions, aliases, site links, statements, external identifiers, and an ontology. What these things mean, I'm going to tell you in a second. So let's start with labels, descriptions, and aliases. Here, for example, you have the entry in Wikidata about Earth, um, our planet, um, which has an English label Earth, um, but in German, for example, um, we don't call it Earth, we call it Erde, and there's another word in, in Turkish, in Spanish, in Latin, and so on. And these help us understand what the concept that you're looking at is about, what the item is about. And you can give that a name in a different language, and you can also uh, give it additional names, like if it has some uh, aliases or it's known under another name. 
And then last but not least, we have these uh, short descriptions that tell us um, what this uh, thing is in a, in a very short form. And all of that together is there to make it very easy to find uh, concepts. Because at the core of Wikidata is not um, English names like Earth, um, but we see it as a very international project, as a multilingual project. So all items in Wikidata are not identified by their English name or in any other language, but instead um, by this little QID you can find here at the top. And everything that Wikidata covers has a unique QID. Earth, for example, is Q2, and the universe is Q1. Now, in addition to that, we have uh, some code cyclings. Um, you might be very familiar with them from Wikipedia, for example, where you want to connect one uh, Wikipedia article in one language with an, uh, the same, or with an article about the same thing in another language. And before that, before Wikidata existed, this was all um, covered in the individual Wikipedias, and now we centralized it in Wikidata to just have to maintain it once, which uh, is a huge um, help to not have to duplicate all that work. And in addition to not just having these articles for Wikipedia and all the other Wikimedia projects, we also have these uh, little badges um, which indicate, for example, that an article is a featured article on that badge or a good article or whatever categories um, the different uh, projects have. To indicate that an article, um, for example, needs review or is uh, especially good and so on. Then we have statements, which I think Many people um, associate with with the first thing when we when we talk about data. That's the that's the bit of um, the data that is in Wikidata. And here, for example, you have a statement about the highest point of the Earth. And there's um, three values. We have the Mount Everest, the Chimborazo, and Mauna Kea. And depending on um, how you determine the highest point, um, one of them. Um, is, makes more sense. So, for example, the Mount Everest uh, is the highest point on Earth if you look um, from sea level. And these statements can connect different items and the different concepts we have in Wikidata. And this is really important because um, we don't just say that the highest point is Mount Everest. No, Mount Everest is another entry in Wikidata um, where we can find more data than about Mount Everest, for example. Just like um, you can, uh, on the Wikipedia article, click through different articles, here you can do that with the data. And this is a very powerful thing when you want to ask questions about the world uh, through the data that Wikidata has. Then um, we have external identifiers. They are at the bottom of an item and they tell you where entries about the same topic are in other databases, in archives, in national libraries, in social networks, and so on. Are. And that helps you, and especially machines, to get to that data in these other places. Because Wikidata doesn't hold all the data that um, you might want to have, of course, and it shouldn't. So, for example, on um, on the entry about Earth on Wikidata, you will find an, a link to the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, where it uh, has the ID Terra, or you find an, a link to the US National Archives or TV tropes, and many, many more. And that makes much more data on the internet accessible to whoever's uh, looking for that data through Wikidata. And then uh, another thing that maybe not uh, always so obvious is that Wikidata has an ontology that is very helpful. And what I mean with that is it tells you how different things relate to each other. So for example, Earth um, is a part of the Earth's moon system and it is a terrestrial planet. That means um, you can later ask Wikidata about, okay, what other terrestrial planets are there? What else is part of the Earth-Moon system? And so on. 
and having this um, these relationships between different things encoded in Wikidata in a machine readable form makes that um, much more accessible and queryable for all the things we're going to talk about. Of course, there's much more to Wikidata, but I think these are um, the important pieces. Now, what do people do with that data? They do a lot of things. Um, inside Wikimedia, here's just some of the things to look at. Um, here uh, you have uh, an article about um, a cheese uh, on French Wikipedia, and this info box here uh, is coming from um, from Wikidata. All the all the data about that cheese is coming from Wikidata. Or here on Commons, you have an info box on the category for Saturn. Um, and there you have uh, all kinds of useful data that, um, that we can provide our readers uh, on comments in this case. Or here's an uh, info box on English Wikipedia that's powered by Wikidata, um, and one on, I think it was Catalan. Um, but not just info boxes um, are uh, powered by Wikidata, uh, by Wikidata, also a lot of other things. So for example, sometimes um, at the bottom of Wikipedia articles, you have these um, authority uh, control links that are very similar to the external identifiers that I was talking about. And those um, also sometimes, uh, or increasingly often, come from Wikidata. So for example, here you have um, for <clears throat> one from um, Irish uh, Wikipedia and one from English Wikipedia that again, for in this case, Wikipedia readers makes much more content accessible and much more knowledge accessible. But of course, Wikidata's data is not just used by the Wikimedia projects, it's also used by a lot of projects outside Wikimedia. Um, here are just a few of them. So for example, um, we have a project called Open Art Browser, which is a, a website where you can go and look at very beautiful art. Um, and you can explore art by artists, by um, motifs of what's shown in the art, um, where the art is, in which um, gallery, for example, um, what type of art it is, and so on. Um, it's a very nice educational website. If you haven't uh, seen it yet, I highly recommend it. Open Art Browser. Or here's a little mobile app uh, that was built for the German election last year, where you could go uh, on the street, scan a uh, um, an ad for, for a party and it would uh, give you information about the candidate um, for that party, how they voted and so on uh, to help you make a more informed decision. Or here um, is a, a project called um, <coughs> equals street names dot Brussels and what they did, they looked at all the streets in Brussels and classified who they are named after and then uh, color coded a map to show you how many uh, streets in Brussels are named after men and how many uh, are named after women and so on to, to raise awareness uh, about how, how unequal the representation and, and who we are honoring with street names for example uh, is and this exists for a few other cities as well. Um, I'm not sure if uh, there's one for Istanbul. Or here um, we have the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. They are looking at the data and Wikidata to find um, names of the people they are investigating as part of their crime and corruption reporting. Um, so that they can f more easily find uh, which names these people are basically hiding behind and, and make their reporting better. Now, let's go back to inside Wikimedia. How exactly does Wikidata support the Wikimedia projects? I think on a very high level, um, I like to summarize it as Wikidata brings us closer together and lifts us all up. 
So bringing the projects closer together, bringing editors across projects closer together, and helping us all um, provide more knowledge to the world and uh, doing our uh, work more easy and more effectively. But let's look at it in, in detail. One of the probably most important things Wikidata pro uh, does is providing reference data so that um, the projects can fill info boxes with that data. Um, sometimes projects also use it to automatically assign categories to articles, for example. Providing authority control data, as I've shown you before, and much more. Beyond that, Wikidata also helps all of our projects and Wikidata included in that increase data quality. So, and with that, uh, increase the quality of the knowledge we provide to our readers. How does it do that? So, for example, um, some of the Wikipedias have uh, introduced um, special categories that track when they have some local data and they compare it to the data that Wikidata has. And when it's different, then they put it into a category so that someone can look at it and, and figure out, OK, is um, Wikipedia, in this case, uh, maybe um, wrong? Is Wikidata wrong or something else going on? And I will show you an example in a second. Wikidata also helped, and still helps, increase data quality by finding articles across languages that um, are not linked to each other, but should be. So, for example, um, a while ago I was looking at a Wikipedia article, I think it was on German Wikipedia, uh, that was linked to an article on Spanish Wikipedia about a city. And then it turns out there's another cluster of Wikipedia articles uh, on Japanese Wikipedia, and it might have been English Wikipedia, I'm not sure. Um, but they did not know about each other. And through Wikidata, I found this because they, they had similar data, and I uh, could find that they are duplicates. And now um, all of that content is more accessible thanks to some of the things that Wikidata does. And last but not least, since Wikidata's data is uh, machine readable, we can build tools, and we have tools, to do logical checks on our data. So for example, if you have a person with a date of birth and a date of death, and that date of birth is after their date of death, meaning they died after they were, uh, before they were born, that's probably not right, unless they are a time traveler. Um, but it should be looked at by someone to verify, are you a time traveler or are you not? Um, if they're a time traveler, that's fine. But otherwise, probably someone should fix that data. And that is uh, possible thanks to uh, Wikidata being machine readable and, and um, being able to, to have tools that do that. So here's an example of uh, what I was talking about earlier with the uh, tracking categories. This is from English Wikipedia, and it basically looks at uh, Twitter accounts that are mentioned in articles on English Wikipedia and compares them to the Twitter account of the same person or project or whatever it is on Wikidata. And if they're not the same, then it automatically puts uh, the article into this category. And now someone can investigate, OK, what's going on? Why is, why is this different? Did someone randomize uh, Wikidata? Did someone make a typo on Wikipedia or is something else going on? But it probably should have someone um, look at it. And these types of uh, categories exist for a lot of uh, things, not just for Twitter usernames, uh, like in this example. All right, then we have reducing workload by um, having one centralized store of data that everyone can but doesn't have to use, um, we're making it possible for everyone to share in the work instead of repeating it in every single Wikipedia, right? You just have to do it once. Um, 
in Wikidata when, for example, a new election happens, um, you have to uh, update it once in Wikidata and then that um, propagates through the Wikipedia articles that use that data instead of having um, to update that data point in every Wikipedia article. Now, in this case of an election, you probably want to update the text of the article as well to um, talk more about the election, but you, you get my point. Um, so, and the beautiful thing about this is that this even works thanks to the multilingual nature of Wikidata um, if you don't speak the same language as the person um, you're collaborating with on, on a particular data point, right? Um, if someone, for example, updates the number of inhabitants um, for a city um, in, in their language, I can make use of that data in the Wikipedia in my language without having to speak the same language. Now, this is uh, all an ideal scenario, of course, and there are a lot of cases where you still have to have to communicate and where you have to figure things out together, but nonetheless, you can benefit a lot from that shared work um, so that not everyone has to do the same work over and over again. And this is, of course, especially beneficial for the smaller Wikipedias who, who don't necessarily have all the, the manpower to, to write a ton of articles and keep up to date with all the changes to data they have in their info boxes. Um, having help from others in that case is very valuable. But it doesn't just go uh, that way, right? It doesn't just help the small Wikipedias. I'm a firm believer that the medium-sized and the, uh, even the large uh, Wikipedias can benefit a lot from um, work that is being done for smaller Wikipedias um, that they would otherwise just overlook because it's topics that they uh, don't focus on that much because it's in a different region, for example. Um, yeah. So through that, um, hopefully all Wikimedia projects benefit. And then uh, we get to bootstrapping new projects. So bootstrapping or starting a new Wikipedia or other Wikimedia projects can be very hard, right? You're writing a lot of articles, you're putting a lot of um, effort into, excuse me, into outreach, you're putting a lot of effort into talking to people to, to join, um, you're building up content so it's actually valuable to, to your readers and so on. And with the help of Wikidata, um, this, you can um, have much more content um, already available for your readers without um, doing all that work yourself, but by relying on work that ha has already been done on Wikidata. Because all that data, for example, has already been collected and I will talk about this later, but the article placeholder is a very uh, central piece to that, and in the future also abstract Wikipedia, which you might have heard about as um, one of the big new projects coming up. Um, <clears throat> and then we get to another benefit of um, Wikidata, which is that it enables us to build new tools, to have new processes that were either not possible before or really, really hard. And since we have machine-readable data in Wikidata, um, we can do all kinds of cool new things. For example, um, there exists a tool called Hysteria, um, which you can um, use to update a list on your wiki. This can either be in an article or in a, in a project space that uh, readers don't necessary access, um, that is basically uh, putting the result of a query to Wikidata into your, into your wiki and updating it regularly. So this could, for example, be a list of uh, recently released video games that you want to write articles about, um, and, and that could kind of give you and your, your wiki project, for example, a work list. 
but you could also do things like writing a query to Wikidata uh, to get just one example, Twitter accounts of people who have an article um, on your Wikipedia but who don't have a picture um, so that you could reach out to them and say, hey, would you be willing to, to donate a picture to us, upload it on comments so that we can integrate it into your article. We're also um, making a lot of headways in, uh, with Wikidata for campaigns, for example. Um, you could create a list um, automatically uh, of, for example, species that have an article in another language, uh, Wikipedia, but not in your Wikipedia, and um, help people translate uh, as part of an editathon or other campaign. Or there's uh, things like Wiki Shoot Me, which shows you places around you that don't have a picture. Um, so if you're on vacation, uh, you can use the tool, or even at home, um, you can use the tool to find places around you that have an article on Wikipedia or an item on Wikipedia uh, that doesn't have an image. So you can go and take a picture and upload it to comments. And it also enables us uh, to do um, much larger uh, new things like the Structured Data and Commons project, um, which is a real change for Wikimedia Commons and, and making it easier to, to use the images there, uh, to find images there, and so on. Um, here's an example of such a listeria list uh, that is uh, being uh, run on Wikidata in this case. And this is uh, a list of um, people who recently died and um, so that people like administrators on Wikidata in this case can keep an eye on uh, when vandalism related to them because uh, that's unfortunately a, uh, usually a target for, for vandalism. But it could also uh, serve you as a way to check if your Wikipedia has an article about these people and, and which ones you want to write if they don't exist yet. And last but not least, Wikidata helps us understand our content better, the content that we have in our projects. Um, since it's machine readable, we can do a lot of analysis on our content in the projects uh, to, to better understand what's going on. One, of, uh, one example for this is um, a project called DNLS, and uh, it analyzes uh, different Wikipedias and also Wikidata for the gender gap. And this is part of the reports it produces. And here it looks at what's the gender gap on different Wikipedias. And one thing you will uh, notice is that uh, way down here, Welsh Wikipedia is the Wikipedia with the smallest gender gap. Um, there are almost 50-50 um, articles about um, <coughs> men and women. Now, this could help us, for example, go to Welsh Wikipedia and understand, okay, what have you done? How did you manage to do this? What can we learn for other Wikipedias from that um, if we want to? Now, this is just one, one example of, of an analysis of our content that we could do, and there are many more opportunities. I'm sure you, you have uh, ideas uh, related to your, your project and, and the type of uh, content you're working on. All right. Now, how can you actually use that data from Wikidata in your projects? There are different ways how you can do that. The first one um, is by calling Wikidata in your articles or um, templates. Uh, there are parser functions that we provide. Um, for example, here, uh, one called statements. Um, and then you provide what you want, uh, for example, the date of birth. And you want it from the item with the ID Q42, which is Douglas Adams. And then it will display in your article um, the date of birth of Douglas Adams in this case. That's a very simple but not a very flexible way of getting the data from Wikidata. If you want more freedom and more com complex um, 
queries to to Wikidata in your in your content, then you probably need to use Lua, um, a Lua mod, build a Lua module to to get data from Wikidata and display it in your articles. And this can um, be in Infobox templates, for example. There's a page on Wikidata which has documentation about this. Um, it's at Wikidata uh, how to use data in on Wikimedia projects. But that's not the only way. The other thing I quickly mentioned already is the article placeholder. This is a, an extension that you can uh, have enabled on your wiki. And when your wiki doesn't have an article about a topic, but a reader searches for it, it then checks if Wikidata has content about what the person was searching for. If there's content on uh, Wikidata, then it offers the reader, when they were searching, say, basically, sorry, we couldn't find anything, um, but here's some data about that topic. And then it will uh, give them a link to uh, a page such as this one, which is from Esperanto Wikipedia, um, which is basically a small data sheet to give the reader at least some uh, useful content about what they were searching for, even if um, you don't have an article on your on your wiki yet. And then at the same time, it encourages the reader to write an article and, and hopefully get involved in your wiki. And how this uh, looks, the layout of this can be customized uh, on your wiki via Lua modules. Um, so if you have someone who can uh, do a bit of Lua coding, you can use this and adapt it. Uh, to to provide more content uh, for for things you don't have an article about. Then uh, another project um, that is very helpful is called DataBox. Now, if you uh, don't have anyone on your wiki who is very familiar with Lua, then you can use DataBox, and it's basically ready-made Lua modules for you that you can copy into your wiki. Um, you only have to do a very minimal configuration, and then uh, it will be able to build you info boxes like this one here uh, for this asteroid um, out of the box, all, uh, with all the data coming from Wikidata. The documentation for that you can also find on Wikidata at module column data box. And then another thing that's um, relevant is a project called Wikidata Bridge. Sometimes um, editors on Wikipedia um, are, are not very familiar with how Wikidata works and it's a bit of scary to, to make edits there. So, and having to go to another project from the, uh, the Wikipedia. So we built this tool called Wikidata Bridge that lets you edit Wikidata directly from your Wikipedia. So in the info boxes, you have these little pens, and when you click on the pen, it will open this pop-up and let you make your change to that data. That um, tool is live right now only on Catalan Wikipedia with a very um, minimal feature set, um, but in the future, we will build that out. And you can find out more about the Wikidata Bridge on MediaWiki um, on the Wikidata Bridge page. So, if all of that uh, sounded interesting and stuff also um, piqued your interest around Wikidata, then you should definitely uh, come to Wikidata and uh, look at a few of these things. The first thing is the project chat. It's the central discussion page for project-wide discussions um, where you can um, ask questions you have or uh, see what people are doing. Then, of course, we have wiki projects, and I'm going to show you some in a minute. Um, we also have uh, something called the Wiki Summary, which is a wiki newsletter with everything that's going on around Wikidata and that uh, people should be aware of, and that includes both um, community news but also development news and more. There is a chat on Telegram, um, which you're very welcome to join to talk to other editors uh, in real time. 
there are social network accounts for Wikidata on Twitter, on Facebook, and a few others if you want to follow and um, receive news there. There's also a mailing list if you're more into mailing lists than uh, any of the other things. And um, once a quarter, we hold office hours where you can come and um, ask questions and get updates on uh, what's happening on the development side of Wikidata. And of course, there are a lot of events um, for community building um, around specific topics. Uh, the last one we did was uh, data quality days to get people together to talk about data quality, for example. Or um, Wikidatacon, which is the every two years conference to celebrate Wikidata's birthday, uh, and much more. Wiki projects. Um, there are just a few of them. There are a lot of wiki projects on Wikidata, um, from uh, books, video games, to music, to Star Trek, to astronomy, to uh, genes, to politics. You name it, Wikidata probably has a wiki project um, for you to join, and I highly encourage you to, to join one that uh, is about a topic you're interested in. Now, where is Wikidata going from here? Last year, we um, sat down and, and discussed a few uh, things that we think we as in the development team believe is uh, are important for Wikidata. And the first thing uh, there is um, empowering the editors to increase the data quality in Wikidata, giving people the right tools that they need to, to keep the data quality in Wikidata high so that Wikipedia and many others can rely on it being good, uh, useful, correct data. Then we want to um, help facilitate equity in decision making. So there are a ton of decisions being made on Wikidata that influences what kind of content Wikidata has, how that content is modeled, who gets to be part of it, and so on. And um, we want to ensure that that is um, equitable. Then we have increased reuse for increased impact. So this means we want a lot more people out there to be able to use the data on Wikidata to build cool applications, services, and provide knowledge to the world. Then uh, we want to help strengthen underrepresented languages. Again, you will hear more about lexicographical data um, later in the event. And a lot of work uh, is happening around that to um, make sure that um, Wikidata is a place where uh, language data can be recorded, and especially data about underrepresented languages in technology. And last but not least, um, probably most important for you, um, we want to make sure that we enable the Wikimedia projects to share their workloads through Wikidata and really benefit from Wikidata and making it easier to benefit from Wikidata. What does this mean specifically? Um, right now, we're working on a bunch of different things. Um, first, uh, building out the lexicographical data part of Wikidata so you can record words and, and data about words. Then we want to help people better encode modeling decisions. So for example, um, if you have a, um, an entry for a human, then that probably should have um, a date of birth, uh, if we know it, or a profession, uh, if applicable, and all these things. And trying to, to encode better um, what kind of data we, we want to have for, for specific uh, classes of things. Um, that's hard right now, and uh, we want to improve that. Then we want to make it easier to access the data in Wikidata for developers so they can build uh, great tools, great services, great applications, and so on. And last but not least, as I said, um, we want to better integrate Wikidata and the other Wikimedia projects. Uh, 
Um, and you are the first to hear this, um, and I'm very excited about this. Uh, next year, we're going to have a team that specifically works on on that part. Uh, so that's specifically tasked with improving how the Wikimedia projects can uh, benefit from Wikidata and the other way around. And with that, um, I hope um, you're going to join us for celebrating one decade of uh, Wikidata, also beyond this event. There's a lot going on. Uh, you can find it on Wikidata colon 10th birthday. And with that, um, thank you so much for listening. And I hope to see you on Wikidata. And I'm happy to take some questions from you. About the Wikidata bridge, after the Catalan Wikipedia, you already have other projects that might be interested in testing that. You might have probably recognized also the voice and uh, where where I'm going to go with this question. Sorry, I'm not sure I can understand the question well enough. <laughs> you uh, after after Catalan Wikipedia, you have other projects that want to test Wikidata bridge or. Yes, so uh, the Wikidata bridge is not just interesting for Wikipedia and uh, Catalan Wikipedia. There are a few other Wikipedias who are very interested in it when, when we have uh, added a few more features. But also beyond uh, Wikipedia, um, I can, for example, imagine that Wikivoyage uh, could benefit from it, but also other projects if, uh, if it makes sense. And if you have a specific project in mind, I'm happy to talk about it and see uh, if it makes sense and how we can do that. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraging you to ask questions, but until you can think of questions, uh, I'd like to suggest maybe Lydia could say something about data donations. Uh, I th data donations. I think we haven't yes. had any data donations from Turkic communities, or am I wrong? Has there been a data donation from a Turkey? Yeah, so I think this would be an interesting new topic to discuss. Maybe you could inspire us with a few examples and, of course, explain what a data donation is. So I think data donations are a great thing. Um, if, for example, um, we work together with institutions to get their uh, data into Wikidata um, where it makes sense, um, I think that's great because it gives us access to high quality data, hopefully to authoritative data um, that, that we can uh, rely on. I think what is very important in, in such a uh, such a project is that it's not just uh, an institution or organization or wherever the data is coming from um, gives that data to us and throws it over the wall and then that's it. Um, I think it's very important that we we try to find ways to engage them to also be a part of of Wikidata and the Wikimedia project as a whole um, for the long run and to help us maintain that data, keep it updated and, and ensure that it's um, not just relevant and, and, and good today but also tomorrow and in 10 years. So if you're if you're working with institutions that, that have very valuable data, um, that, would, that would be great. Um, you can um, find help for for data imports, for example, um, within the Wikidata community. You could start on the project chat um, if you if you need some help with that uh, on the on the technical side, like how to how to get that data into Wikidata. Um, yeah. Uh, just, just to add a concrete example of what that might be, you could, for example, partner with a museum here in Istanbul to get reliable yeah. data about its entire collection 
all the objects it has, paintings, sculptures, whatever, and document them well on Wikidata, complete with references to that museum, which is a reliable source on those things. You could work with the government and get population data, for example, or statistics about education, all kinds of things like that, where the, the partner is the source of high-quality data that we could use on Wikidata. Yes. And one example where this worked really well um, that I can remember is uh, the Sum of All Paintings Wiki projects. So those are a bunch of really uh, lovely people who care about art, and they um, got in touch with museums or used available data that uh, the museums had published or galleries had published um, about paintings. So what's on the painting, who painted it, when was it painted, all that type of stuff. Um, and then uh, imported that data into Wikidata, which then enabled um, great applications like the open art browser that I showed you earlier. Um, and having that um, from getting the data to um, making it usable on Wikidata to actually have a you know, great application built on top of it, that's great. Um, and if you have a data donation where, where you can actually integrate the data done in Wikipedia articles or in some other application outside um, Wikimedia, that, that's really valuable. Do you have more questions, more things you would like me to talk about? <laughs> 